Hi everyone, this lesson is on four weird symptoms of pancreatic cancer. Before we talk about those weird symptoms, let's discuss what pancreatic cancer is, some risk factors for getting it, and some of the more common symptoms of this particular cancer. So pancreatic cancer is a cancer of the pancreas, and the pancreas is a digestive and endocrine organ with a variety of functions. So it not only produces endocrine hormones like insulin and glucagon, but it also produces digestive enzymes as well that help us to digest our food. Now, some risk factors for getting pancreatic cancer include the following. Tobacco smoking, chronic pancreatitis, so if you've had chronic inflammation of your pancreas in the past, and this is especially important in those who have chronic alcohol consumption, this can be a risk factor for pancreatic cancer in the future. Other risk factors include obesity, type 2 diabetes, family history. So if there's a family history of pancreatic cancer, you're more likely to also get it yourself, especially if there is a first-degree relative who has pancreatic cancer. So a first-degree relative would be a sibling or a parent. And dietary factors. Certain dietary factors also increase your risk for pancreatic cancer as well. Now, the prevalence of this particular cancer increases with increasing age, and the median age of onset is 70 years of age. But we can see this cancer occurring in younger age populations. And this particular cancer has a poor prognosis. Now, some of the more common characteristic symptoms of pancreatic cancer include back pain. So there can be a back pain that can occur with this particular cancer, along with generally an abdominal pain. We can also have jaundice. So jaundice is a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. And this can occur without pain. So sometimes we can refer to this as painless jaundice. And then another important symptom of pancreatic cancer is weight loss. So weight loss can occur in up to 90% of patients who have pancreatic cancer. And the reason is because the pancreas has digestive functions in the sense that it releases digestive enzymes. So if there is a reduction in release of digestive enzymes, we're not going to be able to break down macromolecules to be absorbed by the patient. So they're going to end up having malabsorption. They'll end up having weight loss because of this. So these are some of the more characteristic and more common symptoms, but we're going to talk about some weird signs and symptoms that can occur in pancreatic cancer in the upcoming slides. Now, one of those weird findings we can see in pancreatic cancer is a recent onset of diabetes. So some patients can have a recent onset of diabetes. We did talk about the fact that type 2 diabetes is itself considered a risk factor for getting pancreatic cancer. But if you don't have type 2 diabetes and you don't have any risk factors for diabetes, that's going to be especially important. So you don't have obesity and you don't have any family history, for instance, and you all of a sudden have an onset of diabetes, especially after the age of 50, this could be a potential sign of pancreatic cancer, especially if you have some of those other findings we talked about before, like jaundice or some other findings we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. And the reason that we can have diabetes occurring in pancreatic cancer is because of the fact that the cancer's mass can grow and start to reduce number of what we call islet of Langerhans. So the islets of Langerhans are these groups of cells in the pancreas that contain what we call beta cells. And beta cells are what produce insulin. So you can imagine that if parts of the pancreas start to get taken up by the cancer's mass, we're going to have a loss of these types of cells, the beta cells. And we can have a reduction in the amount of insulin being produced. This can end up leading to a diabetes in some patients who have pancreatic cancer. Another potential weird finding of pancreatic cancer is urine and stool changes. So urine and stool coloration changes can occur in pancreatic cancer. So what we can see is the urine coloration becomes darker and the stool can become lighter in coloration, which is what we call acolic stools. So the stools become clay colored. Now, why does this happen? If we look in this image here, here's the pancreas, but here's the gallbladder and the common bile duct that runs past the pancreas and ends up dumping bile and not only bile, but something called bilirubin into the duodenum of the small intestine. Now, if we have a cancer, especially a cancer in the head of the pancreas, in this area here of the pancreas, we can have an impingement or a blockage of the common bile duct, preventing bile from being excreted and also preventing bilirubin from being excreted. And we can have a buildup of bilirubin into the blood, which can then cause the kidneys to filter that bilirubin and cause a darkening of the urine. And bilirubin is what gives stool its coloration. So if we don't get bilirubin into the small intestine, into the gastrointestinal system, it's not going to be acted on by gastrointestinal bacteria to 
produce that darkened color of stool. So we end up having a lighter colored stool, clay colored stool. So this can occur in some patients, especially if they have a cancer in the head of the pancreas. Another finding we can see in pancreatic cancer is pruritus. So pruritus is a generalized itching sensation. It is often going to be progressive, so it can start off very mild and often will increase over time, so patients become more and more itchy. And the itching can become intense. Now, the pruritus itself can occur prior to jaundice, so this can occur early on in some patients who have pancreatic cancer, and this is going to be due to accumulation of bile salts. So this is going to be due to the same thing we just talked about. If we have a cancer, especially near the head of the pancreas, this cancer can grow, it can impinge on the common bile duct, preventing the gallbladder from emptying its bile salts into the duodenum of the small intestine. Those bile salts will increase and will eventually be dumped into the blood. And bile salts in the blood cause itching throughout the body. So this is the reason why we can have pruritus in patients who have pancreatic cancer. So bile salts again get dumped into the blood enter into the blood and cause that itching sensation we talked about before. And then another weird finding we can see in some patients who have pancreatic cancer is what we call trousseau sign. So trousseau sign is also known as migratory thrombophlebitis. So the name tells us what this is. So thrombo refers to thrombi, which are clots. And these clots, these blood clots occur in blood vessels that causes inflammation of blood vessels. So inflammation of blood vessels is phlebitis. So we end up getting something that looks like this. So certain blood vessels will have certain clots that form. It'll cause inflammation of that blood vessel. And what's important with regards to trousseau sign is that it is migratory. So it will move around over time. So we can have inflammation of certain blood vessels in one area of the body. And then all of a sudden that can resolve. And then there can be another part of the body that will have another blood vessel that becomes inflamed that can resolve and then there can be another one in a different part of the body. So it again is migratory. And this is again due to thrombi or clots that form in blood vessels that leads to inflammation of the blood vessel. Please check out my other lessons on pancreatic cancer for more information on pancreatic cancer. Please consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon.